Hi, first of all I wish you all a good day. And may all your good goals, come true. Okay. Now I am going to teach you through this tutorial, how to create a large number of fish, swimming with the help of Maya particles. For that, I first select create emitter, in end particles, under FX. Now I press W, and go to the move tool, and place that emitter where I want. Now I go to the animation slider below, and click the play button there. Then you can see, how the particles flow down. Now I press the stop button, to stop playing the animation. Next, I click the right mouse button on the animation slider, and go to playback speed, to confirm, whether the playback speed is under play every frame and max rail time. Now click the right mouse button, on the bottom button of the left vertical toolbar, and select perspective and outliner, to get the outliner. Now I select emitter 1, in the outliner, and go to its settings, by pressing the control button and the A button. Next, change the max distance value to 600 under the distance and direction attributes of those settings. Now I move the animation bar to the first frame and play the animation again. Now you can see how the range of particles generated has expanded. Okay now, to explain this point to you better, I stop the animation and select the emitter again and set the max distance value to 50 and play the animation again. Now you can see, how the area where particles are generated, is narrowed. I again give the value of max distance, as 600. Okay, now I select nucleus 1 in the outliner, and go to its settings. Sorry, before that, I select emitter 1 again in the outliner, and give the speed value, as 10, under the basic emission speed attributes. Now I go back to the animation slider, and click the play button. Then you can see, how the speed of particles move, increased slightly. Okay, now I stop the animation, and move the animation bar to frame 1. Next, again select nucleus 1, in the outliner, and go to its settings. You will see, that there are three values of gravity direction, under gravity and wind. Those three values are, the values of x, y, and z, respectively. You can see, in the bottom left of the Maya viewport, how the directions are shown, in miniature. Its averages are shown in the direction, indicated, by the positive values of the respective, x, y and z directions. You can see, how the particles move upwards, when I set the value of y, which is the middle value of the gravity direction, to be positive, 1. But I want my particles to move in the x direction. Because, the 3D fish, that I am going to connect to these particles, must move in the X direction. Okay, now I go back to the outliner, select nucleus 1, and go to the settings. Next, I will give the value of X, as positive 1, and the values of Y and Z, as 0 in the gravity direction, under its gravity and wind. Now I give the value of wind speed, under gravity and wind, as 250. Next, since the wind direction is given, as x direction, it remains the same. Now I go to the animation slider, and press the play button. Then you can see, how the particles move faster, in the x direction. Now I stop the animation and turn on layers 3 with the three 3D fishes in the layer palette. Then you can see, my three 3D fishes. Now I go to the outliner, and rename the three 3D fish, as fish 1, fish 2, and fish 3. Now I go to the outliner, and select one fish, and press the shift button, and without releasing it I select the third fish, and release the shift button. Then you can see, how all three of my 3D fishes were selected. Now I click the small box in front of Instancer, under Particles, in FX, and go to its settings. This Instancer replaces these selected 3D fishes, to our particles. Now I give the Instancer a name that I like, and give the particle we made, to the particle object to instance below, and click the Create button. Now I turn off the three layers, where my 3D fishes are inserted, and play the animation. Now you can see, that although I have included three types of 3D fish in these particles, only one type of 3D fish has actually been included. 
but I need to include all three types of my 3D fish in these particles. Now I go to the outliner and select particle 2 there and go to the related settings. Next, I expand the three tabs named Add Dynamic Attributes, Instance or Geometry Replacement, and Per Particle Array Attributes. Next, I click General under Add Dynamic Attributes and select the Parent ID under the Particle tab in the Settings box. Click the Add button and close the Settings box. Then you can see how an array named Parent ID has been added under the Per Particle Array attribute. Now I click the right mouse button on the black box in front of the parent ID under per particle array attributes and select create expression there. Then copy the code in the select object and attribute in the expression editor that comes and paste it under the expression below. Next, type the equal sign, rand, and two brackets in front of the pasted code. Then type 0, comma, and 3 inside those two brackets and type this mark with dot and comma at the end to run this code. This code says that our three 3D fishes should be periodically replaced by particles. Next, click the Create button and close the Expression Editor. Next, I set the Object Index under General Options of Particle 1 as Parent ID and play the animation. Then you can see how all three types of my 3D fish are created from time to time in these particles. Now I stop the animation and move the frame bar to the first frame and turn on a layer containing my 3D fish. Now I'm going to add some animation to my 3D fish. So, I first select my 3D fish and go to rotate mode, rotate it the way I want, and press the letter S on the keyboard to add a keyframe. Now I go forward a few keyframes and again rotate my 3D fish the way I want and add a keyframe. Next, copy the first keyframe and paste it to the second keyframe a few keyframes later. As you can see here, I used the first keyframe of my 3D fish as the only last keyframe, so it is easy for me to loop this animation. Now, I go to the animation slider and press the shift button and the left mouse button, and without releasing, I select these three keyframes and release the left mouse button and the shift button. Then you can see how the area where my three keyframes spanned in the animation slider turned red. Now I click the right mouse button and copy and paste it one keyframe after the last keyframe. Now I play the animation so you can see how the animation of my 3D fish is well cycled. Now, as I did before, I copy and paste the keyframes until my animation slider is completely filled. Now I press the play button. Then you can see how the animation of the 3D fish that I animated has been copied to the automatically created 3D fish. Now I animate the other two 3D fish in the same way. Okay now, I'll turn off the three layers I added my 3D fish, go to the animation slider, and press the play button. Then you can see how those animations have been added to all the 3D fish, created from the particles. But you can see that all the 3D fish in my scene are the same size. But not in the real world. So I am now going to change the sizes of the automatically generated 3D fish. For that, first stop the animation and select in particle 2 in the outliner and go to its settings. 
Next, click General, under Add Dynamic Attributes, and go to the Add Attribute and Particle Shape 2, Settings box. Select the new tab, and set the data type as Vector, and the attribute type as per Particle Array, uncheck the Add Initial State Attribute checkbox, below it, and give a suitable name. Now press the Add button, and close the Settings box. Now you can see, how an array, named Custom Scale, has been created, under Per Particle Array Attributes, in Particle 2 settings. Now click the right mouse button on the black box in front of that custom scale array and give creation expression. Now copy the code under the selected object and attribute as before and paste it below the previous code in the lower expression bar. Now write this code in the same way as above code. But give only the two values in brackets as 0.5 and 3. This means that the sizes of our 3D fish created in the particles will change from time to time between 0.5 and 3. Now press the Edit button and close the Expression Editor. Now, give the array called Custom Scale that we created to the scale under General Options. Now you can see how our 3D fishes are created and move in different sizes. Now I turn on the layer where the lights have been added, in my layer palette. Then you can see, how the lights have been created, in the scene. Okay, I will now take a render shot using the V-Ray plugin to see how my 3D fish looks. Okay, thank you very much for watching my tutorial. Hope to see you all with more new tutorials. God bless you all.